show you today how to model a skate park bowl from a satellite image. And this bowl is the Harbor City Skate Park Bowl. It's one of my favorite ones to ride. And uh, it's a good one to model too. It's created by, it was designed and built by Spawn Ranch. Um, super fun one. So we'll just close that file. And the Harbor City Skate Park is kind of down by San Pedro. It's right here. It's so fun. I love this place. Uh, so anyways, I've got a screenshot of this and we'll go back to Rhino. We're going to create a new file, large objects using feet as our units. And then just, you know, every time that when I go to work, the grid always jams me up. So the first thing I do is I type in grid. I'm going to remove everything here, the axis, the grid and the, uh, the world, and we're gonna change that to all viewpoints. So that just feels a lot cleaner for me. So we're gonna to go to top view. First thing we wanna do is bring in our satellite image. So I'm gonna type in picture and select our Harbor City Skate Park satellite image. And Google Maps, it's great because they always have, they always have a little legend down here with a scale. So I can just draw a rectangle that's 20 feet. This is amazing that it's 20 feet that's really good resolution it helps us get pretty accurate with what we want to do so let's just work on our layers here we're going to change our red to our working layer we we'll change blue to our dimension or reference layer this purple one we use for transitions so down here let's make our background so we can go ahead and scale this now. We're gonna scale it 2D. And from this point right here, then we know let's type O for orthogonal. This is 20 feet in the image. So we're gonna scale that to the actual 20 foot units right here and it's gonna snap. Okay. Excellent. Let's make this layer background. Just block the layer. And then now we've got the bowl in Rhino and we know it is to scale. So I'm just gonna go and make our active layer our working layer. The first thing that we wanna do is uh, we basically wanna draw everything in 2D and then we're gonna arrange those shapes and profiles into 3D and we'll use those as kind of construction lines. <clears throat> construction lines to create our surfaces. So we need to start with our coping line. And it's obviously, it looks like a big circle here. You know, and if we pull it out to this size, we can see down in the corner of our screen, it'll tell us in the current units, our radius. So I'm gonna say like, we're almost at 14, let's type in 14. So we've got a 14 foot radius here. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna change my dragging to smooth dragging. And then I'm just gonna line this up with our satellite image here. That's pretty darn close. Um, the other thing is I really like seeing my lines in the colors of the layers. So I'm going to type in print display and we're going to change the state to on. And now we can see done. Now we can see it in red here. So let's, uh, you know, this amoeba bolts three bowls here. So our deep end and then these two pockets of the shallow. So let's draw some circles for these guys too. This looks like a, uh, looks like about a 10 foot radius. All right. And then another circle, I'm just typing in CIR for circle. This looks like it could be about, you know, let's try 9.5. Come in here and see if that, that looks like it actually matches up kind of nice, right? Okay, so I'm gonna just take this background image here and go to its material, and I'm gonna uh, make it almost transparent. So I don't really need to see too much of it. There we go. I can see the bends here and, and over here. So, go ahead and lock that again. 
Uh, so now we need to connect the surfaces into one outline. So I'm going to select all three of these, type in TR for the trim, the trim command. And every time I'm, I'm typing something in until the command shows up in the prompt over here and, and you can hit space bar and that will advance you into the tool. So I'm just going to select anything that's intersecting here. That's going to cut it out. I'll go ahead and delete this. Now I know that this actually from skating it, this section of the bowl right here is it's, I don't know, a six or an eight foot long straight section of coping. So I'm going to type in LI for line and I'm going to go tangent and I'm going to pull a tangent line off the coping here. Zoom in, you know, it looks like it comes out something like that. And then to connect all of these curves, we're going to use the fillet command, which will blend with an arc, the two different curves. So we're going to type in FIL for fillet and we'll try an eight foot radius. That's pretty nice right there. Try it over here. And I'm just hitting spacebar again to advance. That looks pretty good. Let's use the trim command now. Look at that. So that's pretty nice. I'll take it. Let's turn off the background now. So these are all separate sections. I'm going to go ahead and just type explode here, and that's going to turn all of our segments into individual pieces that we can edit. And then I'm going to go through also, I'm going to go to here, our dimension, our reference layer, type in points. I'm going to just, so I know where the ends are, I'm going to add points. You can do this one. This one here. Okay. Excellent. So the next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to draw some transitions. So I know that the, the deep end, it's about eight feet deep. We'll get our transitions layer here. And it's just to vert. That's what it feels like when you're skating it. So I'm going to make a circle that's eight feet, and then I'm going to go ahead and just make a rectangle or box that's eight feet, and we're going to use the trim command again. All right, so there's our first transition. For the shallow end, just typing Alt to get a duplicate. For the shallow end, this is our fl flat bottom. Um, I'm, I want to say that it's about five feet deep, I'm just going to move it up by five feet, use the trim command again. And these are our two transitions that we're working with, an eight foot deep, deep end, and same transition, eight foot foot transition, cut it five feet for the shallow. So let's go ahead and see where we're working with. We're going to move these the way over here. Let's go ahead and delete this guy. We don't need any more. And I'm going to hit Zoom Extends, extends ZE. And I think the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually add some construction lines for these templates, for the transitions. So I'm going to make a line and hit P for perpendicular. And I'm going to bring it off of here. I'm going to do another one. Just get this guy out of the way. Do line perpendicular here. Line P again for perpendicular. Basically, I'm going to do this on all of the sections here. So that we have something to uh, line our transitions up with. And then I can just delete these after. Cool. All right, so this transition is our shallow end. So move that one right there. And this one is our deep end. 
right there. So I'm going to go ahead and copy our deep end. We're going to move another one over here. And our shallow end, we're going to copy it and move it here, 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 and here. And then we'll go back to the top view and we're going to rotate all of these into place. So R for rotate, R for rotate. And I'm just hitting the space bar because it activates the last tool that was used each time, which is rotate. So I'll just select this, hit space bar, and it brings me right into the tool. So it's pretty quick. All right, and then let's go back and delete our guidelines. Okay, excellent. So let's see what that looks like. So now you can see it's already starting to look like, like a bowl. But wait, there's more. If we go back and we look at the flat bottom here, well, then we realize well, we need to offset this. And we need to do it through that point right there. And then we'll extend this line to make that a closed circle right there. And then for the flat bottom up here, we can take these lines together. You know what, let's bring them out to here, actually. Select all these. We're gonna join them and then we're gonna offset these through a point, again, through this point right here. Then we'll fill it. Fill it. These two, look at that, and that, uh, it's that eight foot radius again. Okay. So this guy, we can turn snappy dragging back on. I can use our gumball here. Snap it to the bottom. You can do the same thing here, just snap it on that Z axis. All right. Now I know for a fact we have a waterfall right here. Let's go back up to the top. And we're going to draw a line that's going to go from here to here. And then let's do a couple things. Let's Duplicate this, and actually let's project this to the C-plane and delete that. I'm going to bring this, this guy up and uh, make a copy, take down there. I'm going to use this part of the drag on the gumball to extrude this surface. Go back here. I'm going to go CP for construction plane surface. So now our construction plane is right there. And I can go ahead and I can move these points vertically to these different surfaces. Um, I want to look directly at this plane. And I'm going to make this our waterfall. So let's go ahead and uh, set the camera to our seaplane top, like that. And then we're gonna rebuild this surface, this curve, sorry. Change it to point count of five, that works. And then we'll take these two points and use our gumball scale to just give us a nice little S curve right there. It's pretty good. that that looks nice okay and let's change our view back to perspective we can get rid of this guy and this guy and this line right here is now so we can just change it over to transitions so there now we have our full outline of the bowl and now we just need to make surfaces let's go ahead and uh, Change this to surface. 
And then we're going to do some sweeps. First, we're going to split. Split this into different sections. We're going to use these as our cutting objects. All right. And now we can do a sweep to first rail, second rail, and then our shapes. There's our deep end. And we can go and we can actually select all of these. We can type in planar surface. All right, so now we've got a closed curve. Now we should be able to do planar surface. Excellent. All right, and let's keep working along. Our next section, we're gonna have to split this one. Yeah, we'll split this one with all of these guys here. And then we're gonna do sweeps again. So first rail, oh. This actually needs to get split as well. Now we should be able to do our sweeps. Rail one, rail two. Actually, you know, we can sweep this whole section here. We're gonna join that. And then we can use this as our bottom rail. And we're going to join that. And now we should be able to do sweep two. I'm going to select all of our pieces here. Look at that. That's nice. OK, so this one now, I'll do the same thing again. Come back. We're going to join these and make them a planar surface. There's our flat bottom. Uh, now, these ones are a little more complicated. Rhino does a great job with surfaces like this. Since we have all of these outlines, let's go ahead and split this one, this curve, and this curve. We're going to do it on that one, too. OK. So now we can select this guy. Uh, we're going to have to re-split this as well. OK, now we're going to make a patch surface. We're going to select all of these curves that outline it and type in patch. Look at that. It does a really nice job, super clean. Let's do the same thing. All of our outlines. And our patch. Look at that, there's our bowl. We can even turn off. The whole thing, it's kind of nice with the, the template lines because those would perhaps be, uh, you know, where your, your seam lines would be for pores. We could add those in also down here. If we, um, if we copied, let's try this. If we do a, uh, take this curve and we're going to do a polar array array polar the center is going to be right here and we'll have three items i think we want four items and we're going to go from here to here there we go we end up with an extra Now, what about the coping line, right? Well, if we take 
we take that coping line and join it, you know, let's just make this, we'll call this layer coping, then we can actually just use the pipe command, uh, maybe with a one and a quarter inch radius. And then now we've, we have our coping also, which is really cool. So if we go back now just to like finish it off, we can go to our background here. We can select that coping line and we can use that trim command again and just trim out our background image. And then let's even, let's go one step further to our satellite image and just turn that full blast back up, lock it, and there you have it. That's how you build a skate park bowl in Rhino. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.